Hi guys, in this video we'll look at structural polysaccharides, chitin, the structure of chitin, and then we'll finish with a summary. So there are a variety of structural polysaccharides found in life, and one of the examples of this is known as chitin, or chitin. So as well as cellulose being found in the plant cell wall, some structural polysaccharides can be found in other organisms, like fungi and insects. And we'll be talking about chitin in terms of being found in fungi and lots of insects like beetles. So in the cells of the fungus, or the fungi, the polysaccharide known as chitin is used to strengthen the cell walls. So in plant cells, we were talking about cell walls which surrounded the cell, giving rigidity and structure to the overall cell and therefore the overall plant. But these were made of cellulose. In the fungal cells, the cell walls are made of slightly different material, known as chitin. Majorly, it has the same function in terms of giving rigidity and strength to the cell wall, which surrounds the cell, but it's made of a completely different molecule. In insects, the chitin is used in a slightly different way, and the chitin is used to give strength to their exoskeleton. So with most insects like beetles, what we find is actually, instead of having an inner skeleton like we do, they have an outer casing known as an exoskeleton. And it's a tough structural skeleton which kind of covers the entire body, giving a bit of protection. And also, we found that chitin as a molecule is waterproof. So it helps the insects prevent their water loss as they move through their environment from their body. So because this chitin is waterproof, the water which wants to leave the body into the environment doesn't leave through this material. So it's good for protection and it's good for maintaining water. So let's talk about the molecular structure of chitin. It has some similarities and a similar structure to cellulose, but it does have differences too. So the main similarity is that it's also composed of many beta-glucose molecules as the monomers joined together into a chain with 1,4 glycosidic bonds. So let's just talk about that structure here as a recap. Remember, glucose can be of two isomers. It can either be alpha or it can be beta. And in the case of cellulose and chitin, we're talking about the beta molecule. And the beta molecule looks like this hexagonal structure. And we have a long chain of beta-glucose molecules. And as monomers, or monosaccharides, they're always linked together into a chain via types of covalent bonds known as glycosidic bonds. And you can see the bond between these hexagonal glucoses as they connect an oxygen between them. And remember, we number the carbons in a sugar from 1 to 6, normally going in the direction towards this end carbon group. And what you'll see is that between two glucoses, we've got one carbon, which is number 1, and the other carbon linked in is number 4. Hence why we call these 1,4 glycosidic bonds. So beta glucose joined in a chain via 1,4 glycosidic bonds. 1 to 4, 4 to 1, etc. The difference with chitin against cellulose is that it also contains another group called acetylamine groups. And this is bonded to the carbon number 2 of the beta glucose monosaccharide. So again we've got the same structure here, but what you'll notice is the difference is on carbon 2 of the glucose, we have these groups sticking out on the sides. And these groups are named acetylamine. Acetyl referring to acetic acid, and amine refers to something with a nitrogen and hydrogens in it. So each of these are the beta glucose molecules, and we've talked about the chain just before this, but also remember carbons are numbered. And if this is number 1 and this is number 2, these acetylamine groups are always bound to number 2 in the carbon ring. And what we tend to say is that when this chain of chitin is formed, the glucose plus this acetylamine group is given a particular name as a monomer. The whole thing is called N-acetylglucosamine. So this is all one word, and it seems really long, but when you break it down, it kind of makes sense. We've got the acetylamine and the glucose bit just being rearranged. We've got n acetyl glucose amine. So the acetyl amine go either end of the word, glucose in the middle, and the N refers to a nitrogen bound glucosamine. In cellulose, remember, each of those beta glucose molecules were inverted, and it's the same case here to form these 1,4 glycosidic bonds. So in both cellulose and in chitin, in order to form these 1,4 glycosidic bonds, each glucose has to be turned upside down from the previous one. So this acetylamine group is facing upwards for this glucose, and in this one, it's facing downwards. So every time there's a new glucose, it goes up and then down, up and then down, etc. 
And because we have this inversion, just like in cellulose, the chitin chains that we form are straight. Otherwise, they would be coiled up like we had in amylose. So the chain is completely straight. And because of this, these long straight chains can lie parallel to each other with hydrogen bonds forming crosslinks between those chains. So here we have multiple chitin chains and they all line up next to each other in a parallel manner. And in order to connect them, we have hydrogen bonds forming between particular glucoses. And these are usually between things like hydroxyl groups. So hydrogen bonds crosslink the chains. Each hydrogen bond is quite weak, but overall the multiple crosslinks found across this entire entity would be very strong. And then we find this hierarchical structure just as we did with cellulose. The cross-linked chitins all bundle together to form stronger structures known as microfibrils. So just going through this hierarchy, we've got one chitin chain here made up individually of these N-acetyl glucosamine units. We've got another chain here, another chain here, and each of these represents a chain. And the chains all bundle together to form a general wound up structure. And this structure is a microfibril. And then overall, each of these strong chitin microfibrils will be deposited around the cell to form that cell wall, adding strength and shape to the whole fungal cell. So imagine all of those microfibers spanning the wall of the cell in multiple directions, up and down, side to side, crisscrossing over each other. Overall, it's going to form a very strong structure for the cell. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Revise smiley face, and together, let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.